Hey guys, so we have come to the point where you have followed my videos, you've done the sowing the seeds, and you've done the cuttings, and finally something's happened. You got sprouts coming up. You got, your cuttings are finally starting to form new growth, and you do the little tug test and you're getting, um, you know, resistance, and so you know that they're rooted. So great, everything is going really well. Now what? So, um, we start to question, am I taking care of them right? Now, I know that I have the video in regards to how to take care of proteas uh, in the potted and landscape situations. And, um, you know, that's for our full grown plants. But what do we do with our propagation stock, our more sensitive uh, material? Um, you can see here, I've been putting on these eczemias and speciosas, these other proteas here. I've been working with tons of species um, for a while now. I wanna say they're about, golly two to three months now at this point and we're getting some really fantastic growth my xenias are putting on really really great leaves here everything's going really good and I have my compactas here look at that look at all that color there that's fantastic and my personal favorite is actually how the coronata turned out here look at those that is just gorgeous, guys. Looking really good. Great greenery, it's very lush. Okay, and so let's talk about how to take care of these babies. Um, the most important thing when it comes to taking care of your cutting stock or your seedlings is gonna be uh, how you protect them from the light. Now, you'll see here, I'm gonna just take a second here and I will be just gathering up a few of these right here and so just so you see that not everything is perfect here at Ad Hortis Protea Farms that you see all this material here I'll bring it in closer these are parts of that Coronata flat that you know unfortunately have not made it um, what happened was that you know though we do protect our material with shade cloth and we're watering them um, you know, very frequently making sure that the soil doesn't dry out. We will get situations where if the sun gets too hot and um, we're not able to, you know, keep them cooled down properly, they will just start to fry off. Um, though the majority of the flat is still going to be just fine. Um, you know, let's talk about lighting. So, uh, for the first couple of months of your protea's life, um, you're going to make sure that it stays under shade cloth. Now the percentage, oftentimes I'd say 30 to 50% is fine. Um, you don't need to go into 70 because that's gonna start uh, getting too dark and your plants will start getting very lanky. Uh, the lighting should be where you get um, like this type of diffused light where it's bright enough that the plant can still absorb energy and facilitate and function, but um, it's not gonna get uh, trapped any water under the material. Uh, the worst thing is that if you get too much humidity underneath, that actually can harm your plants too. Um, next thing, let's talk about water. Um, when I work with these flats, I oftentimes do it by weight. So I will check to see if there's water weight in there. So my mix, you can get that mix off of the other video that I did about sowing these seeds. Um, I want to make sure that that mix is well hydrated. And so if I feel it and it looks like it's lost, I want to say you know, 10%, 20% of its weight, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use my uh, hose and, you know, make sure to give it proper uh, water there to hydrate the whole thing. If it's a freshly sown flat with brand new seeds and you're worried about disrupting the surface or disturbing the soil, you go ahead and get out your misting nozzle, which is like this. This is one that I use here. It's from the company Fogget, not sponsored. I'd love to be the... Um, Foggit does really great um, uh, misting nozzles for many applications, at least for me, I use it for my early seedlings and it does fantastic. It soaks them in really good, but the sand never gets shifted and they stay very happy. And um, so moving forward, when it comes to uh, nutrition, there's pretty much nothing going on um, except for maybe some uh, micros. So what I focus on is I will uh, provide 
my plants some micros in the form of the uh, like a micronutrient mix that I do and um, that provides them with some early like iron, magnesium and the other micros that they will oftentimes use but in a very light and low concentration. In this stage they are probably the most sensitive that they'll ever be and they will not forgive you for burning them. Um, there are a lot of things that will make them fall apart. You want to make sure that you take it low and slow. So if you need to feed micros, you do it very lightly. If you're going to use um, seaweed extract, uh, I love using that product. It helps uh, with a lot of my younger seedlings. Like you can see here, my Magnifica. Really beautiful. Um, actually, not Magnifica, Compacta. This is my Magnifica. You can see. This is going to be for sale soon, guys, so just hang tight. They will be ready soon. Um, but um, these guys will take uh, seaweed extract at a very light amount. Uh, I typically dilute it to maybe one tablespoon per gallon and then uh, put that out into my, uh, my sprayer and then just distribute it that way. So nutrient-wise, not much is going on there, but water is my name of the game. Um, you see I'm just going through my flats here. Everything is doing just fine. When you get to a certain stage, some seedlings will begin to start dropping off their seed leaves. It's totally normal that that happens, um, but it depends on what kind of cultivar or uh, what kind of species you have, because you'll see like Aristata, totally fine. Everything still hangs on and it looks really good. But you know, I have my Suzannias and everything that'll start to try to get tall and so it's shifting all of its energy upward. Um, when you get to that certain fill size, so let me actually whip out this uh, Suzannia one more time and let's take a look here. Let me show you that root system. So you can see the root mass is actually really well developed. A lot of that brown is peat moss, but you can see a lot of the little striping of the roots in there. That's going to show that it's ready to get into its next size. And so um, if you refer to the uh, how to transplant proteas video, I transplanted some of these a couple of uh, you know weeks back and uh, you know that'll show you how to do it but you want to make sure that you never let these guys get too root bound um, that's going to really hurt them later down the line when you upsize them and everything's so congested that it can't root out so make sure that um, you stay on schedule make sure you put them up into bigger sizes um, as soon as you can and so I will be doing that shortly as well um, other than that uh, just want to let you guys see here that everything is going really well. My cutting stock, my kings are going nuts right now. I need to really put these out into gallon sizes so they can be ready for sale soon. Um, I have my Phil Parvin cuttings that I've been experimenting with, um, as well as a bunch of pin cushions and other, uh, other types of protea here. This is just a regular king. I've been testing out some silver trees too, maybe not so great success. We're going to revisit that at some later point. Um, but yeah, guys, you know, great job getting it to this point here. Um, you know, just stay on top of it. Don't let mother nature destroy everything you have. You're going to run into tons of things. You'll get dampening off, uh, in, uh, contrast or in, you know, defense to that. Um, you can use infuse. That's what I use. It's a systemic fungicide. You can apply that during the wet season and that'll help pre prevent your seeds from dampening off. Um, you can get um, some insect pests sometimes. I've seen some things get aphids. I've seen um, other types of caterpillars or moth larvae come by and start chewing up things. Um, Imidacloprid's fine, systemic uh, insecticide. The whole thing is that you just keep those plants um, dosed up because it's so sensitive that if you want to get your best chance at having them survive, you just take that proactive step, make sure that they're protected. And um, as long as you, you know, literally keep them covered, you're going to be just fine. Um, if you have any questions, please write them down at the comments. Uh, do let me know if you have or you have any challenges with your current seedlings or cuttings. I'd be very happy to help you. You can just reach out at adhortis at gmail.com. Um, again, my name is Jason. Thanks so much, guys. And uh, you guys have a very good one. Bye.